Are you a fan of action RPGs? Well, a fan favorite series is making a comeback in a big way, and thanks to Square Enix, we actually got a chance to play it. A lot of the action RPGs on the market recently have gone for a more gritty and grounded approach with games like Final Fantasy 16 and Dragon's Dogma but it's always nice to have a change of pace and experience a world and setting that's a lot more vibrant while also maintaining a deep and memorable story. It's been over 15 years since the last mainline Mana series game was released, and if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, you may be interested to hear that the Mana series actually started as a spin-off title for Final Fantasy called Final Fantasy Adventure, but then grew into its own popular series. So, even though it looks like a very different game from the gruff and hard RPGs that we normally cover on the channel. We're actually very excited for the potential of this one, so let's go over what we got to play and what we can tell you about this game, and do let us know what type of RPGs you prefer so we have a better idea about what games to cover in the future on the channel. Do you like sci-fi, fantasy, vibrant, dark, gritty? Tell us down below. So, we got to play around an hour of the game, which gave us a nice preview of what we can expect from it, and how the various gameplay mechanics come together, and the demo we played was split into a more open section that actually allowed us to explore the map and game world, while the later section was a more linear experience with a big boss fight at the end. Before we get into the specifics and the nitty gritty, let's give you some context to the game itself. Visions of Mana is being developed by Square Enix and will be released on PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox and PC. If you do like the look of it, luckily you don't have to wait too long for this one as it will be releasing in summer of 2024. And for those wondering about the game and how it will be voiced, there are options for a fully voiced English or Japanese playthrough. It will be an action RPG with large semi-open world areas and unique mechanics whereby players can wield different elemental vessels that aid them in battle and exploration. If you're a fan or familiar with more recent real-time action RPGs, you will be right at home with the game's combat system that plays somewhat similar to Grand Blue Fantasy Relink or the Tales of series. You can actively switch between characters on the fly in combat, meaning you can access the different classes and their elemental abilities, adding that extra depth and spice to the combat and your party gameplay. One of the main draws of any RPG though is of course the story, and from what we got to play, we actually really enjoyed it and the voice acting was pretty good too. The story so far was a nice change of pace, but Square have provided us with a description of the story overall to get you guys up to speed, so let's go through that. In Tiania, I think that's how you say it, the Fire Village, everyone is preparing to celebrate the coming of the fairy and the naming of an Alm. Every four years, Alms from around the world are chosen to travel to the Tree of Mana and rejuvenate the flow of mana power. A Soul Guard is then chosen to ensure the Alms safe pilgrimage. Val is one such guard. On the day of the fairy's arrival, Val brings his childhood friend to the festival. As the sun falls beneath the skyline, all of the spectators wait with bated breath, hoping to be chosen as the Alm. The fairy finally descends before Val's friend, appointing her the Alm of Fire. The villagers then bid them both farewell, praying for their success as they embark on the adventure of a lifetime. So now let's go through our actual hands-on experience, and we sent Toxie Moxie down to Square Enix to play this one for us, as she is very experienced with Square Enix RPGs, and so kind of knows what to expect, as she is a huge fan of other Square RPGs like Final Fantasy. Well, during our hands-on time, we mainly got to play as Val, who is the main character of the game, and he is accompanied by Hina. Val has a set of skills, basic attacks, and special attacks that can quickly dispatch enemies, and some of them are actually pretty stylish and flashy. There's also a special move gauge that will build up over the course of a battle that does a massive attack, and you also have aerial combat to mix it up. So, while it was simple, it was effective and enjoyable when it comes to the actual combat for this type of game. Also in combat, you can quickly press L1 to access your magic and items, so the combat does really flow well, and actually reminds us of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which is very cool. During our demo, Val was outfitted with one of the elemental vessels, which allows him to use wind abilities for combat, as well as in the open world exploration, with things like creating a gust of wind. Vessels in general play a huge part to the core gameplay of Visions of Mana, as they aid your exploration in the semi-open world, and during our demo, we got to play 
play around with the wind elemental, but there will be more elemental triggers throughout the world that will allow you to do all kinds of different things while exploring, like moving rocks or even slowing down time that will open pathways to find hidden items in the map. This of course lends very well to going back to areas you've already visited, so you can see what new things you can find as you gain those new vessels and their abilities, but don't forget they also aid you in combat too. The way that this has been integrated into the actual gameplay is quite cool, because the new vessels basically mean you're getting a new class, as each vessel has a different set of stats, different weapon types, and unique moves or abilities based on their corresponding element. We found this system was actually really cool and added a lot of variety to the gameplay, especially when you pair this with the fact that you can switch between different party members that each have their own vessel equipped that really adds a lot of depth and strategy to the overall experience, especially considering you can change this around based on the encounter at hand. The system really does remind us of Final Fantasy X2's Dress Sphere system, as it also changes the look of the character as well. For the additional vessels and other characters we got to play with, the game lets you have up to three different party members at a single time, and we were joined by Karina, who is from Longren, the Veil vale of Wind. She was in an accident that claimed one of her wings, and has a companion that is a sacred beast cub. Then there is Morley, who is from Eteran, I think that's how you say it, the Moonlit Parish. He has some trouble overcoming his past, as there was a disaster in his hometown. And the two vessels that we had access to in the demo was the Vessel of Wind, the Sylphid Boomerang, and the Vessel of Moon, the Lunar Globe. Here's what they basically did. The Vessel of Wind, while exploring exploring, you could come across triggers that you could interact with and then use that vessel to create air currents, allowing you to get into high places and across different paths. The combination of the different character switching and having abilities from the vessels means you can actually do some spicy stuff in combat, and although it looks really cool, it was actually quite simple to execute, with things like juggling enemies by throwing out abilities and then switching to a different character and using their unique skill. For the Vessel of Moon, this one aids you by manipulating time, so you could slow things down to move through different areas or roll back something, which in different instances could clear the way for a path allowing you to move through. Essentially, both of these things allowed you to explore the world better and discover hidden collectibles that were littered around the map. The semi-open world areas were also decently sizable, which would make them a problem to traverse, but there is a mount that you get access to so you can quickly get from A to B, and the mount is called Pickle. Pickle's use isn't only being cute because it can also dash into enemies dealing damage to them, setting you up well for a fight, or you can quickly run past them and go to your objective. The really cool thing about the demo was the second part of it where we got to face off against a big boss, which was a massive mantis ant. This showed us that you actually can attack different parts of the monster and even break those parts. The battle really well showcased the different aspects of the combat, as you really could see the benefits of using the vessels, in particular the lunar globe, which would slow down time, thus slowing down the enemy, which was super useful for racking up a ton of damage, giving us time to get to those weak points on the enemy. And something that surprised us is that when the enemy is doing a move in combat, you can see a puddle that displays where the large attack will be impacting, which really made us think there is more depth to the combat than we first anticipated. So what stood out to us? Of course, the visuals are amazing and very vibrant. The game is bright and has a really nice color palette that makes it a big change from other games more recently, which have been more dull and gray looking. We feel like this will appeal to a lot of people, and the vessel class changes are really interesting because we're super curious to see what type of classes we will get once we know what other elements are available. For those that enjoy their fashion, the different outfits were quite fun to see, and the music was very nice too, but importantly, the different characters actually seemed likeable from the cutscenes and interactions that we got to experience. The combat system felt good and had a nice flow to it, and we feel like it will be both good for people that are okay at games, but also people who are very experienced, due to the more simple combat, but the depth that you can go into it with the RPG systems. Because of the different elements, we feel like it's a game that will stay fresh and not get too repetitive as you go forwards, with things like Genshin Impact, where you just always have the same moves. We don't know if this will be featured in the full game, but we also liked the fact that the buttons were on the side of the screen, reminding you what the controls were, making it very helpful again for a beginner player. The map was a little bit weird though, as it had this arrow that would kind of guide you to things like a chest for example, and while it looked like it was nearby, the actual chest was quite far away, so we weren't really sure about that. The frame rate also wasn't always great, as you can see here in some of the cutscenes, but hopefully this is something that is remedied when the game is fully released, as this was a development preview build, and games normally are not optimized in these builds, and that usually comes towards the end of the development cycle. But in general, we're excited to see what other elements 
elements there will be in the game and how that will affect combat and traversal. We also thought the button inputs were quite good, making combat relatively easy to pick up and play, even though we were only allowed to play it for an hour. It meant that by the time we got to the boss battle, we had no issues understanding the combat, so again, it was pretty easy to pick up and play, which is quite nice. Overall, this game is looking like it will be a nice, solid pickup, but only time will tell. Let us know what you think of it down below and if you played the original so, so long ago. And subscribe for more daily gaming videos, news, and guides.